Selling on eBay in 2024 is a daunting task, to be honest with you. There's a lot of things that go into it, a lot of issues, buyer returns, uh, bad feedback, all of these sort of things. And I just decided, let's forget about that and let's just do one month of selling on eBay and see how far we can go. And that's what I've done. I've documented all of it from listing, sourcing, to finally how much money we're actually going to make. And hopefully this month was worth all my time. First task is to actually get out and source some items. So Saturday morning, headed out to some garage sales. We had two really good ones on this day, which is very nice. We had these little vintage telephones. They can go for some good money. Um, in here, we've got some vintage Pokemon stuff around the 90s. That little Charmander there can fat, fetch some good cash. There's a couple other bits that, you know, I might be able to lot up. So we'll see if we can separate those ones out and make a play on them. Uh, we also have a very nice little vintage set here, Creepy Critters. Um, this one actually ended up having quite a few extra pieces, so get a bit of extra cash. And this little Viewmaster here, as well as some sealed cassette tapes. Some of these go for some great money, uh, especially the heavy metal ones. Um, I should chuck a comp up on the screen. Off to the second sale, and we had this vintage Houston Astros hat. This one is a nice one, but unfortunately it's fitted, so not as much money. And there's this huge tub of toys here. If I could go back, I probably would have just bought the tub, um, seeing now what I pulled out of it. But, you know, I, I went through and I was a bit nitpicky and I, I took the best ones that I thought was there. But you never know, I might have left some behind, so what can you do? But I ended up pulling out quite a few nice ones out of here. Uh, a bunch of Star Wars stuff that went on to sell and a couple of little Avengers stuff that was worth some good money. But... As you can see, this tub is just full. I'd say there's probably a few hundred figures in here, um, considering how little some of them are. But yeah, we'll see if we can pull out some things here um, that I actually ended up purchasing. This was one, this little transformer here. This is worth a little bit of money around that $40 mark. But thankfully, I was only paying a few dollars a piece for these ones here. But um, yeah, it was a bit difficult to get footage here. So I guess we're just going to move on and see what we got in the car. So back home, first of all, what an amazing find. I've been looking for one of these for a while. Logitech Harmony remotes, they go for over $100 a pop. A uh, couple video games here, some of them weren't in there, some were. It was, I think, 20 bucks for the bag of games, and that was worth it with this Zelda here, which goes around $70. Um, we had a couple of these planes. These did a lot better than I thought they were actually going to in the long run after the month of sales because right at the start we had the whole month to sell those. Um, quite a bit here is going to end up going to the flea market which will be a video coming out soon. Um, we had this fat PS2 console which thankfully ended up working. That was nice. You never know when you're buying sort of a bit older stuff from um, untested places, you know. And I bought it at a price that was untested. I think I paid $5 for it, so no complaints. This ET can fetch some really good money um, with the little talking box in it. Um, here's some more of the toys. Once again, lots of this stuff will go down to the markets, um, and that will just be added into that total funds. Um, there is some... like This was a really nice one. This little Planet of the Apes orangutan figure. That one's from the 70s, which is really nice. Um, those older figures sort of around that age can really start to fetch some good monies. Uh, there's that Transformer, and I think I'll go have a look in a second at maybe some of those Star Wars figures, because um, they were uh, some really good money in the long run. Uh, and once again, the leftovers will go down to the flea market for some sales. In here, we had a little For Real Friends monkey. They go for around $50, $60. And then that Houston Astros hat, I did pick it up. He threw it in for free. And, um, yeah, I don't expect to get more than a few dollars for this down in the markets. But, you know, you're going to get free stuff sometimes. You can't do anything but say yes, can you? Um, but, yeah, that was about it. There's still a fair bit that I sort of haven't been able to show. But um, more of it's going to come up in a moment when I go through some sales. But Empire Strikes Back, paid two bucks for that. Got 35 for it. Sonic the Hedgehog, 35 on that one as well. Really cheap to post, really quick to post, which is important. 30 bucks on this Microsoft Outlook. Um, we actually bought a couple more of those yesterday at the markets, so very happy to see them ones selling well. This one here, oh, if I could go back, I probably wouldn't have bought it. Um, we got this one at the start of the challenge, and I paid five bucks. It's only gone for 30, and it's gonna be an expensive one to post. This Creepy Critter set, I only had this one listed for three days, but I got a $45 sale price for it. 
Uh, PS3, it's slim. I don't do many consoles, but if I can keep getting 120 bucks for them console only, I think I'll keep buying them. And then finally, this Telstra Priority Assist phone. I paid two dollars for this one. Forgot I haven't listed it. Listed it two days ago. And I already sold full price, forty nine ninety five. Okay, Sunday. We are now at the flea market, and this is where the deals start to go down. But first of all, Maddie wanted to have a little chat. Hey, if you're watching this, maybe you should consider subscribing and chucking a little like on the video and support your boy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's a Nikon, it's vintage. Yeah. I just did my password in the camera, Jamie, so maybe don't put that in. I will edit that out for you. Uh, $50. $50. Yeah. $50. What's the actual body? I don't know. Maybe just type in the F2. F2? Because I believe it's been covered by this thing. Have we, got, have we got a price on I reckon my dream's gonna get shut again. What do you reckon she'll say? Oh, it's the same one. The same exact thing. Okay, Jamie, we're gonna split this 50 50, are we? As you can see there, um, a fair bit of sourcing going on, a fair bit down at the local flea market, which, if you have something like that, definitely a spot to source. You're guaranteed at least probably a couple of items a week, which is very helpful. Um, and as you saw there, we actually picked up a very expensive camera. That's a topic I wanted to bring up is that that camera was only picked up the week before filming this video and it hasn't sold yet. So obviously that's not going to be taken into account because we're only taking in genuine profit, not potential profit. But it is something to take into account is if you do want to do something like this for a month of reselling, you're also going to be left with some stock that's worth some valuable money. So you can't just say, oh, I got $1,000 in sales and that's 500 in profit. You also got to say, maybe I've got $2,000 worth of stock that's still left to sell. So that's something important. But then you also got to take into account that um, some of that stuff uh, might not get where you're asking for it. So there is some highs and lows in this sort of thing. But in the reselling business, that's a truth. I'm not here in line to you and saying this is a get rich quick scheme because quite, frank uh, quite frankly, it is definitely not that. But anyway... I think we should uh, get into some of the numbers. I just want to take you guys over some of the sort of items we've been selling. So we've got a PS1 that sold. This one was only console on only. That's something you can look at is the fact that not always will you need cables and cords and controllers. Even games, the consoles can sell for some good money if you can get them for the right pi price. I only bought that one for $5 or $10, sorry, but it sold for 85 bucks. Had a really nice sale here. We got $108.45 for Foils War, uh, the Blu-ray set. I'm not doing a whole lot of DVDs, um, but Blu-ray full series sets can go for some absolutely great money. So if you see them, just give them a comp up. If they're not worth it, leave it behind. If they are, grab them. It's simple as that. Not all of them are going to be worth money. I'm not going to preach that to you guys. So um, basically, just give them a look. It's definitely worth it. Had a cool one here. Um, ALF. Uh, some of the old, older viewers of the channel might know that one. Uh, this one's the 1986 version of it. There is no voice box in this one, which still equated for a $80 sale. So I think it goes for more like $150 with the voice box. So if you have one, chuck it up on eBay. We had a lovely sale of this little lunchbox. I found this one super sick. Uh, really nice condition considering it's a 1979 lunchbox. That one's gone for $59 plus $50 postage to the US. So I think we made about 5 bucks on postage as well because it only costs 45 to ship it, which is always nice. Um, uh, Nikon Cool Picks. We did pay up at this one, so we paid $40 for it, but it sold for $150. That's an example of an item that I know is going to sell for some great money. Digital cameras and cameras in general have been doing really, really well for me, especially if you can make sure they've got good selfie rates. And if they do... You know, I really don't mind paying up money, and uh, I think you guys should look into that too. Because even if you run that a fair bit below what regular comps are, there's still a fair bit of room to make profit. But at $40, uh, a buy-in cost at $150, we are probably going to profit around um, $80 profit, I'd say. So I'm definitely happy with $80 profit on a $40 purchase. Um, we also have... A little Starmie card. I literally bought this one for $2. I didn't get it on footage at the flea market, but the people that follow me over on Instagram would have seen it. 
two dollars for this one here, and it's already gone on to sell for hundred and eleven dollars and sixty cents. What an absolute screamer of a sale that one is. Um, little small one, Futurama, fifteen dollars, but plus thirty dollars postage over to the US. So that's a nice cheeky little extra there. Hundred and ten bucks for a Canon Power Shop. I had this one for a while. It came in and it absolutely stunk like cigarettes. So then I had to uh, basically put it in a box uh, with uh, some aroma sort of stuff. They got rid of it, sent it off to a buyer, and it's not the right camera he was off to. So then it got sent back to me. Finally got it sold just within the month, actually. So a cheeky bit of profit on that one as well. Bought it for 20 and got sold for 110 there's just so much purchases over the past month that I wasn't able to get a bunch of it on footage. I just want to sort of show you guys uh, my main sourcing methods, which is just garage sales and flea markets. I think it's good that they're my only real two sort of areas as well, considering for someone who is a full-time worker or full-time school student like myself, you're not going to have time to go out during the week to different places. So weekends is where it's at, sorry. And um, that's where I've been sourcing. Um, but yeah, we had a Mac Mini. Bought that one for 20 sold for 170 Absolute screamer that one was. And then um, we might just do a couple more here. We had a Wii game. Bought that one for a dollar at a garage sale. Cra crazy stuff. It just, it really is. And it's gone for 70 bucks. That one was Pokemon Battle Revolution. Um, PlayStation 3 Slim console. $90 on that one. Only had 10 bucks into it. And then an interesting one. I never sold a pocket knife before, but... Went to this garage sale down over the border, and uh, it was a pretty quiet morning, and there was this lovely old lady there, and I was talking to her about how I was going to the footy later that, that day, and I spot this little uh, pocket knife, and I know they can be worth some money. I looked this one up, it seems okay, and I've got 35 bucks for it, free post. So a dollar into it, 35, probably make about 20 bucks profit. Can't complain there. Uh, we'll do three more. Uh, Fear Xbox 360. That one has gone up a ton of money. So Fear 2, I believe that one is, or maybe it's the original. Anyway, it's on screen. Got 34 bucks for that one. Nice thing with those is you can put them in a envelope. Um, I like to go tracked. That'll cost you 5 bucks 50 rather than around the $8 it'll cost to send it as a parcel. We had a Star Wars little figure, one of those ones out of that huge lot that we bought for literally about just under a dollar each. That one's gone on and sold for 30 bucks. So we're well into the profit already on those. We had another one of the Star Wars sell for $23, not as good as a sale. I'm trying not to sort of go below $20 a listing or $25 listing on those, but that one I did take an offer on, so I made an exception. Finally, a Xbox uh, One S. I did pay up at the flea at $65 bucks for this one, but once again, it sold in two days for $199.50, so I knew that there was definitely some good money in this one, and if I price it right, get the good photos and tested it well, which I did, the money's going to be there soon, and it did, it turned around for me, so there'll be about 100 bucks in profit on that one. So if we break down the numbers further, I think we had a bit over $2,000 in sales, I'll put it on screen here, and I'm just going to do some calculations quickly on how much we spent, and how much we spent on postage, and I'll come back to you with what we actually made in profit this month. As an eBay seller, it's always important to look for new ways to optimize your business. And there is one cheap, affordable, and easy way to do that. And that is with a platform called Zik Analytics. They provide a great service. And the best part about it that I find is that they're specifically for e-commerce sellers. So they're working for us. Like the platform is built for e-commerce sellers on eBay, Amazon, that sort of thing. But in particular, eBay is where their strong suit is at, if, I, if you ask me. Because they have a feature called the eBay Title Builder. It'll actually search through eBay's algorithm and see what are the most key search terms by eBay buyers that result in sales. So basically, you type whatever product you've got in and it'll tell you what you should put in that title to make sure your listing comes out on top. Because that's super important on eBay is to end up on that first screen because your likelihood of that item, your item being purchased skyrockets through the air. But there's so many other features like tracking sellers, the best sellers on the platform and seeing what they're selling on eBay and how much they're getting for it so you can go and do the same. But there's literally too many features to list. But Zik Analytics, once again, uh, thank you guys. They're actually the sponsor of this video. So if you use that link down in the description, it actually does help me out. I'm not even monetized on YouTube just yet somehow. It's taking forever. So this is basically my only source of income from YouTube. So thank you, Zik, for sponsoring this video. And please do use that link down in the description. It helps a ton. But we're... 2,400 in sales. Um, 
leaving us with two zero six six and fourteen cents after eBay fees. eBay takes the four hundred dollar cut. You can't do much about it, but it's sort of what you get for selling on the pl platform. And I would not have that many sales without it. So you just got to put up with that one. Take the hit. Um, that is only on forty sales, which is what I t want you guys to take into account. Is that you can definitely scale this larger, but on that 40 sales, I'm listing about one item per day on average, um, maybe two if you're lucky, but um, definitely very low level sort of eBay figures here. I have listed 10 items a day at one point and had a $30,000 90-day total. My 90-day total is only at five grand at the moment, so you can get up there. It's just realistically part-time and without burning out. Uh, this is sort of what you can look uh, forward to, I guess, is something like this as just a little bit of cash on the side, and that's what it's for. It's not a full-time job. I want to make that definitely um, important, is that these numbers are not based off a full-time job, but very much what part-time hours would look like. Four to six hours a week sort of work here. And uh, we also had 422 in Australia post fees which definitely hurts. They're the real winners of the situation, aren't they? Anyway, uh, and then I also spent $550 on the stock, which I'm pretty happy with. $550 spent on 2,400 in sales. Really can't complain with that. It means I'm buying cheap enough to make some good money, but I'm also paying up on some stuff like I spoke about. This leaves us with $1,094 in total profit. So if we look at that in uh, sort of other words, we're looking at just over two hundred and sixty dollars, two hundred seventy bucks per week, which is not bad on about I don't know anywhere from four to ten hours per week, depending on travel time for you guys. Just for me, it's more like four to six, but I live quite close to my markets and my garage sales. But if you guys have to travel further for your post office and stuff like that, we can say anywhere between four to ten hours here per week. So at a minimum, you're going to be making it twenty bucks per hour on what you're doing, and it's not bad, you're working for yourself, you can do it when you want, and um, yeah, uh, especially considering if you don't make enough, uh, you can classify this as a hobby and you won't be taxed, so take that one into account as well. Uh, but basically, left with just over 200 bucks uh, per week in profit here, not bad, especially if you're looking at making a little bit of extra money on the side, uh, help out with rent and bills and whatnot, or if you're a teenager like myself, and 250 bucks a week is solid based off not much work. Uh, definitely something to look into. But anyway, that is a month of selling on eBay. Bit of a mixed video here. I've been trying to film it over the month, but to be completely honest, um, YouTube's not been on the front of my mind, but I'm gonna see what I can do. I might construct some videos and actually plan them out a lot better. Try to give you guys some better content. We'll see how this one goes and see how you guys enjoyed it. And then we'll move from there. But thank you guys for watching and uh, we'll see you guys whenever the next one comes out.